a look at how that's going to fare up against Riley's team. Riley is going to be playing at itself a wall to hide behind. But let's get into this first game of this next best of three between Dorian Quinones and Riley Factura for the Swiss round number five. We've got both restricteds on the field, Maridon versus Lunala. We see the electric terrain go up and then is immediately removed by that Rillaboom. So Dorian already off to a great start there. Maridon most likely will want to utilize Volt Switch here to give it the opportunity to pivot to ensure that it can get that electric terrain set up in the future, especially if there is a Pokemon like Iron Crown waiting in the back for Riley's party. This will open up the opportunity though for Dorian to start using those Calm Minds, start to get that Lunala up and ready to go when it's time to start dealing those big hits. It's not bad to also have a fake out user next to it as well. So yes. you can at the very least ensure that you're not necessarily going to be taking a double target attack into this Lunala because that is one way that the Shadow Shield would not be enough to actually allow this Lunala to survive. So the fake out goes into the Incineroar. You're also going to deny its ability to parting shot but also just end up dealing some super effective damage with something like the knockoff. Riley's Incineroar is Assault Vest so it's got a bunch of different moves that it can choose from. And if Riley wants to ensure that his Maridon has the opportunity to go on that pure offensive mode that they love to do, you really want to remove the Rillaboom from the field. So because Incineroar has Assault Vest, there could be a Flare Blitz in its future, but I'm also really curious to see which Pokemon is going to come out on the field now. It's a supportive Pokemon. It's the Whimsicott that's revealed. Whimsicott's great, though, because Whimsicott in a lot of these matchups, you want to try to go for speed control. If you know that the Lunala doesn't actually have access to Trick Room, you can't get punished for trying trying to go for a Tailwind from this Whimsicott, or you could even actually Encore this Lunala into the Calm Mind that it just used. That's another one of the benefits of having a Whimsicott on the team is to be that annoying. It is, and even if Dorian tries to use Protect this turn, maybe get some more health, hopefully reactivate that Shadow Shield ability, the Whimsicott still is going to threaten and Encore the next turn into Protect. So the safest play Dorian can make to preserve the Lunala at this point in time is actually to switch it off the field, which then gets rid of that Calm Mind boost and puts him back at square one. And that's exactly where Riley can kind of start to try to flip things in his favor. If you ignore the Lunala or force it into a position where it is actually going to move off of the field, then you can start to figure out how to weave in your own ride on a little bit later. So here's the Lunala going for the Protect. You can get that grassy terrain recovery in just a little bit, but the Encore is going to fail. You turn into the Orgupon is definitely not the target uh, you would want in front of that bug type attack either, but it is going to allow this Incineroar to get out and you break the sturdy on the Ogre Pond, most important. You break the sturdy on the Ogre Pond, you give yourself access to redirection in the next turn. Uh, really, you provide a lot of support that the Lunala needs right now. Riley does have the opportunity though to go back on the offense and given that the Ogre Pond has already taken so much damage, I think that this Maridon should be able to find a knockout very easily against that spot. It's so depend it depends on how they're trained, though, true. right? Because Very we have true. seen in a couple of places that the Ogre Pond can be a little bit faster. Maridon right now, though, a lot of them are trying to invest a little bit more heavily into that speed stat. So you aren't actually going to be losing out on speed ties or just the natural speed creep that some of these Pokemon can have. Very true, very true. But I do think that it's important for Riley to figure out how he wants to try and either pin this Lunala on the field, maybe consistently going for those Encores, or otherwise just try and get a sneaky KO on something here to give himself a Pokemon advantage and again force the Lunala back out onto the field where the Whimsicott can shut it down. I have wondered too if Riley just ignores Lunala. It's like, possible. You know, I, I think you've also put it in a position where you could also go for the follow me here. It's really nice that the Ogre Pond is able to stay alive because you're able to go for the follow me. And unfortunately, while you end up getting this Encore redirected into that Ogre Pond, you still provide an opportunity here for the Slunala uh, to be taken out a little bit later, especially when the Volt Switch on electric terrain with that Hadron engine boost is going to be enough to get the knockout there onto that Ogre Pond. Choice Specs too. I don't know if we mentioned that yet, but it was Choice Specs, the electric terrain and the Hadron engine. A lot of damage. Absolutely a lot of damage. Now though, when you look at some of the partners that could come into its place though, Dorian has a free slot at the moment. Riley has the opportunity though to kind of feel out what that's gonna look like a little bit later. After you figure out what you want from this switch, then you get a chance to bring it back in and, and see what Dorian's gonna select after that Ogre Pond knockout. 
Yeah, it makes me wonder if he's going to try and send in that Incineroar once again, maybe try and land a knockoff into that Lunala, uh, get rid of the leftovers item so that it can't get as much recovery, can't keep reactivating the Shadow Shield. Uh, there's also the question of what is his final Pokemon in the back of the party as well. Well, right now it's going to be Incineroar taking the board once again here for Riley. Timidate's not gonna matter at all into the special attacker of Lunala. But with this Moongeist Beam, it's at least going to be able to start chipping away at this Whimsicott. I mean, you get the Calm Mind boost, it's at least gonna give you that extra bit of special attack. This Whimsicott is also not necessarily one of the bulkiest of Pokemon, but that Focus Sash is gonna keep it around for one more turn. Now that the Ogre Pond is also redirected away the attack, it's nice that you get a chance to bring in this Rillaboom. That's gonna be the switch in that Dorian wants at the end of this turn get this grassy terrain back up and running and force Riley into the position where you could go for a parting shot if you want to to get this ride on in or you have to go for the manual switch for that electric terrain. I also like how Dorian was able to position this in such a way where the Rillaboom could go for a grassy glide or a fake out into that Whimsicott as well. Just knock it off the field and really open things up for the Lunala. You had the protection from the redirection the previous turn from the Encore. Now, worst case scenario, you get locked into Moongeist Beam, which is still, I think, a lot easier of a move to pivot in this situation. Uh, but we do get the first rastalization of the match from Dorian onto the Lunala. So that fairy typing going to be huge in resisting any attack the Incineroar can at least throw at it. But even bigger there, it's going to help boost up these Moon Blasts. That's going to be a same type attack bonus now for that Fairy type attack. But the Encore is going to lock this Lunala back into the Moon Guy Beam that it used previously. Not too bad though to get locked into an attack rather than something like the Calm Mind or Protect. So Moon Guy Beam into the Incineroar, you're still going to be able to do just a little bit, start whittling away at it, but it's the U-turn into the Whimsicott. It's going to seal up the deal for that one Pokemon. U-turn as well, really nice to be able to cover your bases just so you know that you can get that grassy terrain back under your control from that Maridon. In most matchups of Maridon versus any of the other restricteds, keeping Rillaboom around on the field to consistently threaten the switch of terrains is so, so important. So a great opportunity there from Dorian to keep that Rillaboom around. Big knockoff though, it is going to remove this Lunala's leftovers, so it's gonna be a bit more difficult once that grassy terrain expires to keep getting the Shadow Shield back up and running. Fourth and final Pokemon for Dorian though is going to be this Raging Bolt in this game number one. Riley still has yet to reveal what his is going to be. Be. This is a Life Orb Raging Bolt, Thunderclap, Thunderbolt, Draco Meteor, you know, definitely more on the offensive side. And I think that's a good opportunity for Dorian to keep the board pressure here. But the big question that I have, though, is will Riley send back the Maridon once again, possibly forcing Dorian to just immediately switch out that Raging Bolt and send in the Rillaboom to get rid of that terrain once more? Or if we're going to see Riley, you know, mix things up a bit. He's taking this time to think about it. It's a tough choice to make. It's definitely difficult. I, I think you have like two major threats on the field here. Yeah. If you're Dorian, you also don't want to give over the electric terrain to a Raging Bolt. That could absolutely use that to bolster up its own electric type attacks. But in fact, it is going to be Riley's reveal of the Iron Crown. So that has that natural synergy with that Maridon if you can get that electric terrain back up and running. But it's not so bad to have a steel type attack that can hit into this Lunala. Exactly. Iron Crown, I think, got a little bit of heat earlier on in the season where it was really only used with those psychic terrain teams alongside of an Indeedee. But if the reality of it is Iron Crown has fantastic typing, that psychic steel type gets access to Tachyon Cutter, which is a signature move that can deal two hits and otherwise just put a ton of board pressure down onto the Lunala. Also has Psychic Noise as well, which is a move that we've seen a lot of Ferrigarap pink use of. Yeah, it would be nice if you're actually able to lane that onto Lunala, then you can stop it from trying to get that recovery at the end of those turns, but we're not gonna see Dorian fall for the Protect onto that Iron Crown. It's just gonna be a double target into the Incineroar with the Draco oh. Meteor, barely not able to get the knockout. And you're gonna have to lose two stages of your special attack in the process. You turn <laughs> chipping away ever so slightly at that Lunala's health pool. All you need is one HP of damage in order to break the Shadow Shield. So unfortunately, the 
Uh, Lunala will have to live with that little bit of chip damage as Maridon will come back out onto the field. And I'm very curious to see here what we're going to see activate with the Quark Drive and what stat the Iron Crown's going to boost. A lot of Iron Crowns, they either go for speed or they go for that special attack. In this case, Riley's is going to get a special attack boost thanks to that Quark Drive. And that'll be really nice. I mean, you have a lot of options here just to make sure that you're able to uh, put down that damage, even if you wanted to. We actually could see a Terra. This Iron Crown is Terra Ground. It could go for a Terra Ground Terra Blast into that Raging Bolt if you really don't want to try uh, to, to play your odds there. Riley, of course, has a Dragon Pulse instead, so you can still do some super effective damage, but Dorian doesn't want to catch any of that smoke. He's going to remove this Raging Bolt in favor of the Rillaboom to take that Hadron Engine away. What a tough decision to make here, though, because at the end of the day, while you do want to remove the electric terrain from the field, you also want to make sure that the Lunala is going to be able to find some damage here. And unfortunately, we'll be taking damage from this Volt Switch and potentially an attack from the Iron Crown as well. Whereas Riley, free to just send in that Maridon once again at the end of the turn to get that terrain back. Yeah, Volt Switch is so nice to be able to win out the inevitable war that you're going to have with these terrains. And Sinora hitting the field once again, though, even though it does have a sliver of HP, it still has that utility. And the Intimidate drop going to matter a lot when it comes down to that Rillaboom. Oh. But look at the Tachyon Cutter. I don't think that critical hit matters at all because that second hit that you are guaranteed is surely to pick it up. So Lunala is out of here just like that just like that and very unfortunate for Dorian as his final two Pokemon, the Raging Bulls and that Rillaboom are in a bit of a tough position. At least that this Raging Bolt can still do some really good damage against the opposing Iron Crown, against that Maridon as well if it can land a, a Draco Meteor against it. But overall, I think Dorian's been put on the back foot by that play and really has to find an opening to go on the attack, especially with Terrastalization still available. That Iron Crown has been such a game oh. winner for Riley. I mean, like, I feel so bad watching that. That was a double crit from the Tachyon Cutter. You could even see Riley start to cringe just a little bit watching that all play out before him. You definitely want to win the game, but it doesn't feel great to win just like that. Now, though, Dorian down to his final two Pokemon. You've got the Raging Bolt as well as that Rillaboom. Still more of this match to play out, though. Riley's going to have the terrain as soon as that Maridon comes back in. He is, and it's possible we're going to see this Incineroar quickly try and land a U-turn to get that damage or get that terrain right back. Woodhammer into the protecting Iron Crown, though, and here it is. That pivot that is so important in these matchups. Once again, Maridon can return to the field, and it's really Iron Crown's game to win right now. It really is. I mean, you bring the Maridon back in, it's still also looking very, very healthy at that full HP. And Rillaboom, worse for wear. Now, without the grassy terrain, doesn't have an opportunity to go for something like that priority grassy glide. And you're also just going to be doing less damage overall from the wood hammer as well. Intimidate drops around. It's looking uh, very difficult here for Dorian to try to find his way back in. Best case scenario, I mean, you do still have a Raging Bolt on electric terrain, but it's going to be the Dragon Pulse first. It is, and that's going to be more than enough damage to pick up that KO. So a uh, good information, I guess. I, I think a lot of people would just assume that the Dragon Pulse would pick up the KO there, especially given, again, just how powerful Maridon is. Uh, Attacking Cutter will bring Rillaboom down into the red, and even though it'll have the opportunity to go for one more Wood Hammer here, uh, that's just not enough damage. No, I, I mean, good for the Rillaboom. Maybe it's not enough, so it doesn't actually get the knockout on itself, but you are going to see Dorian throw in the towel for this game number one. Riley Factura in this best of three. Going to go up 1-0. And Riley just doing a fantastic job throughout that game, preserving the terrain, recognizing that as long as the Rillaboom was on the field, chances are it'd be switching out momentarily to bring that grassy terrain back once again and following that same exact strategy with his own Maridon. I think what gave him the edge at the end of the day was the fact that the Whimsicott was able to put so much pressure down onto that Lunala, make it sit around with the Shadow Shield ability broken, with being locked into Moongeist Beam so it wasn't doing more effective damage. And then following that up with the Iron Crown going for the super effective damage after he had terrestrialized into the fairy type. Riley just had some really great board position to open up those opportunities for himself. 
Well, one of the keys to success with Maraidon is just wanting to get as much damage down as possible. It's all about the damage trades. Are you comfortable being able to make sure that you are just kind of chipping away consistently at what your opponent has? And can you actually leave some of these bigger threats on the board? Yes, the Whimsicott absolutely helps to keep that Lunala in check, but I'm just looking at the fact that Riley has two very powerful forms of offense on his team, and that Maridon and that Iron Crown. You didn't even need to have either of the abilities activated to feel like they were able to actually put in the work. Yeah, I mean, look at this. Uh, the, the, the double crit, like, I, I live rent-free in my head at this point. It certainly was a lot of damage and something that I would love to see what Dorian's thinking when it comes to this game number two and how he can better answer the threat. The combination of the Maridon and that Iron Crown together. I think Incineroar would be an interesting adjustment. You do have knockoff and that would certainly, you know, deal super effective damage to the Iron Crown. Remove the Expert Belt, which also would boost a little bit of damage there as well from its attacks. Um, but I think more importantly, giving yourself more opportunities to pivot to match the fact that your opponent was pretty aggressively pivoting throughout that game would be really important for Dorian to consider as an adjustment. I loved the Ogre Con Cornerstone. I, I don't know if it necessarily found what it needed to find in that matchup. And while it was great that it did redirect things a couple of times and give the Lunala the opportunity to go on the offense, I think more fake out would just be easier for Dorian to pivot or play in this matchup. I think it's really tough though, because you have a couple of options on Riley's team that are just so good into the Incineroar itself. So we'll have to wait and find out if Dorian wants to try to make that adjustment. For now though, both players very comfortable to just go back to what they ran in that game number one. And in game number one, we saw the Rillaboom go for a fake out into the Incineroar with a Calm Mind on that Lunala. I'm very curious if we're gonna see Dorian lock into that play again, because it's not necessarily a bad play for him. You get that Calm Mind boost immediately. You ensure that even if you do take a little bit of damage from a Volt Switch from Rhydon on the way out, you're able to get that bulk going, get that damage going. And again, just start yourself off on the right foot. Riley has to pivot this Maridon here if he wants to keep the terrain, if he wants to ensure that a potential Iron Crown in the back will have those openings. Well, this could be a, a big play here. As we take a look at game number one, Dorian wants to try to go all out on the offensive, but there's a switch that comes through first. Riley preserving that Maridon doesn't even want to try to go for a Volt Switch there. In fact, it's just going to be the Iron Crown that takes its place. Certainly a Pokemon that might be able to take this hit just a little bit better as Dorian gets that Terra Orb ready to go. It's going to be that Lunala once again taking that Terra Fairy and giving itself a damage boost to the Moonblast right off the bat. I know we saw in game number one, there was an attempt at landing a Moonblast against one of Riley's Pokemon, did not make it thanks to the Whimsicott's Encore, but here now is the opportunity to go for it. Take a look at the Moonblast. I mean, Iron Crown, it's just the typing, right? Yeah. It's gonna be so beneficial to make sure you are withstanding that attack and you now know that you actually Ooh. just get that Terra out of the way. Rillaboom burnt for its troubles as the Flare Blitz is able to hit its target. This is already a not off to a great start here with that Rillaboom burned and at such low HP. Even if the burn didn't come through there, the fact that the Rillaboom is within KO range from another attack from the Incineroar or the Iron Crown means that Riley is just one KO away from getting that Maridon total control of the terrain. This is such a big shift from how the game was played in game one, where there was constant fighting for it. Yes, you can still withdraw your Rillaboom. Yes, it'll still be able to come back once, maybe even twice to bring that terrain back, but there is a time on that Pokemon now, and Dorian has to play it very carefully. Well, we're gonna see the Incineroar. That was a Pokemon that you were hoping to get a chance to see, so Dorian is going to opt to bring it to the party. Get the Intimidate drop onto the Incineroar, but not before it says, I am out of here. Maridon now eager to take that Incineroar's spot as it's going to help out this Iron Crown immensely. This time around, there is no Calm Mind boost here onto this Lunala. So the first one breaking the Shadow Shield, the second oh. hit is gonna take it so low, already down to the red and with no recovery available outside of just the leftovers. Now, you talk about timers, there's another one on this Lunala. 
And with the Iron Crown taken out by a Moongeist Beam, I think that's a trade that Riley is very, very happy with. Iron Crown was one of two major attackers on his team with the Maridon being the other one. It's on the field, it's ready to go. And honestly, if you anticipate your opponent switching in their Rillaboom here to get that terrain back, you can just go for a Dragon Pulse or maybe just another Volt Switch on that Pokemon, do plenty of damage to the Lunala to pick up the KO or even bring that Incineroar down a little bit and then bring back that terrain once again. I mean, I don't I don't know if it even matters at this point. Like, Maridon is naturally faster. Yeah. Whimsicott is also going to help with that if you wanted to lay down a Tailwind. It's just going to be tough from here. I think Riley already put himself in a great position. The Iron Crown has done a lot of the work it's needed to and gets to go take a nice rest after that a nice rest indeed also i love how the whimsicott came out on the field here because like you mentioned you know it does provide that tailwind support does also have that encore threat once again so really just keeping tabs on what dorian can and cannot accomplish in this matchup and Whoa. we have a ghost type terrestrialization on that whimsicott not wanting to be flinched by fake out no, I mean, even if you go for the fake out, though, you could just uh, try to get some damage down a little bit later. Reminder that Incineroar is a dark type, so you can't actually use the prankster abilities into it. The Volt Switch, though, already going to make sure that it's going to be down in the red once again as Whimsicott. I mean, even just following it up, it's got Moonblast as one of its attacks. So you could just try to get some damage down and take out this Incineroar. Everything is so low already on Dorian's side. It just needs one small hit from something in order to take it out. Well, that Moonblast went into the protecting Lunala, but again, Riley just finding this great opportunity to pivot out that Maridon. And while Dorian can match that pivot with a parting shot here, this is a tough decision to make. Well, I think at this point, you know that it's going to be a, a tough choice, but I feel like your Rillaboom is on such low life, but you yeah. want to try to get this Ogre Pond down in front of the targets I'd love to see. That would be the Incineroar. That's kind of the biggest threat that Ogre Pond looks at. It's like, I would love to just Ivy Cudgel you. That would be fantastic. And so now you do have the opportunity to do that, or at the very least, you have the opportunity to follow me. That's another piece of this Ogre Pond's kit that's so valuable when you are trying to protect something like this Lunar that can be a little bit frail on his own. And I think Follow Me would open up the opportunity as well for this Lunala to either bring that Whimsicott down to its Focus Sash or otherwise bring that Incineroar within KO range from another attack. If it isn't already in KO range from Ivy Cudgel right now, I think Dorian's making a bit of a risky read here. I, and I think that's what you have to do when you're on the back foot like this in a game number two at the World Championships. You have to hope that you're able to land that attack against the Incineroar, pick up that KO, and force Maridon back out onto the field before your Rillaboom's time is up. Either way, this Ogre Pond is going to be able to do a lot of damage. That resist is gone. That Iron Crown is already going to be off the board. And when you look at some of the other options that could be in the back, nothing is going to want to take this Ogre Pond's Ivy Cudgel. The Fake Out, in fact, actually does go over into the Lunala with the Moon Blast to pick it up. We do see Dorian have to sacrifice his Incineroar for hopefully the greater good. As the Ogre Pond does get a chance to land this Ivy Cudgel, it is going to get that knockout onto the Incineroar. And so, that is Riley going down to his final two Pokemon. The Maridon now going to be the one that is stuck on the field with no opportunity to change that terrain. There still is a lot of momentum in Riley's favor, though, given how little health Rillaboom has and how much health the Maridon and Whimsicott have on Riley's side of the field. I think Dorian has bought himself one more turn here to try and find an opening in a way through this matchup. Your Ogre Pond is still at full health. It does still have the sturdy ability active, which means it will take two hits to pick up a KO on it here. Whimsicott certainly can break the sturdy ability, but how much damage is Maridon going to take this turn? I mean, Ivy Cudgel is so strong, and it also has an increased crit rate. So Dorian right now, he sees the line. He wants to go for the fake out. You have a choice fix on this Maridon on Riley's side, so there's no way to actually stop this play from coming through. And Ogre Pond is still quite fast. So even if you do get taken down to the sturdy, uh, you've already got the fake out, which is like the biggest benefit, and you get the Ivy Cudgel to follow it up. 
we're going to see this Marina take a ton of damage. Here's the fake out first. It's going to stop it in its tracks for now as the Whimsicott with the Moon Blast. I mean, this Ogre Pond still gets a chance to attack, and that's also not very much. The Ivy Cudgel to follow that up is going to bring this Mirai down to below half, and that is that is still significant. If you're able to at least try to get this damage through, then you could be okay. At this point, too, Rillaboom, even though it is burned, it's still providing some value. It is still providing some value here. That flinch was so important. Unfortunately, now, though, I, I think what you would normally like to see is no burn on your Rillaboom so that you can Grassy Glide into that Maridon for the KO. I think with the burn, that's going to be a tough thing to ask for. It's all down to this Ogre Pond at the end of the day. It needs to find a knockout against this Maridon, and then it needs to keep enough health so it can get two hits against the Whimsicott. At this point, I think leave the Whimsicott alone. Like, yeah. I, like yes, it's still doing about a, a bunch of damage. It still has its Focus Sash intact, but you're really hoping at this point that Riley is going to make, well, a mistake. Yeah, um, I, I mean, that's exactly what it is, though. <laughs> I, I, I laugh because, like, it, it is Riley. Um, but here's the Spiky Shield first from the Ogre Pawn. This Dorilla Boom just wants to do at least something here. It is going to be the Dragon Pulse into the Spiky Shields here, at least able to try to direct away one of those attacks. But this Whimsicott as well, with oh. a double target into this Ogre Pond, leaves this Rilla Boom to at least do something. It would have taken resistant damage there from the Grassy Glide, so it's really not that big of a deal here for this Ride on Shake Off. Even with the U turn, you're still chipping away at it. You know, that bring in the Sunala is not bad, knowing this Ogre Pond is still alive to get a follow me this next turn. Ogre Pond is around for Follow Me, and then you also have the additional fake out pressure as well when Rillaboom returns to the field. And Ogre Pond honestly is looking really healthy right now. It's not enough to get sturdy back by any means, but I think it certainly is enough to potentially take two attacks from both this Whimsicott and the Maridon. And honestly, Whimsicott isn't the best special attacker, and it's possible given how that Lunala is trained, a single Moonblast would not be enough to pick up the KO there. But we don't see any attempts of redirection. Instead, Rillaboom returning to the field once again. Well, you don't have to. I think you're hoping that the Lunala is tanky enough to be able to deal with this Moonblast, and you can't yes. hit the Dragon Pulse into a Fairy type. So while you do sacrifice your Rillaboom here, you get the opportunity to bring this Ogre Pond in later, very, very healthy. As long as you're able to survive this Moon Blast, that's gonna be the big thing. Deal that damage back there with that Moon Guy's Beam, and yeah, I mean, Lunala, it does have some very good special defense bulk. It's gonna be able to take that very well. Maridon is out of here, and Dorian still in very good spirits at the end of this game number two. Yeah, Dorian finding that opening. I think it really was the double target into the spiky shield that just gave him this opportunity uh, for Lunala to take the final two KOs of this game. I think all he has to do now is just follow me and go for another Moon Guy's Beam or just go for two attacks. Yeah, the two attacks here is fine. Yeah. I th don't think you need to follow me knowing how much you took from that Moon Blast. Just get the double damage down if you really wanted to play it safe. There is that. You have the Focus Sash as well to worry about, but no matter. The follow me is also just nice to make sure that you're not going to be taking a little uh, too many funny businesses here. So Encore, if you really want to think about it. But yeah, Moonblast is perfect. You don't want to get crit, and yeah. here you go. Here you go, indeed. First hit to bring you down to the Focus Sash. I really love how Dorian pivoted in this game number two. I mean, I know it was very, very close at the end, and Riley almost had it, but just being able to hold on to that Rillaboom, even though it was burned, even though it took all that damage in that turn one, uh, just goes to show that you really can't count your outs until you're done. No, I, I mean, I think Dorian played around that well, though, yeah, right? Like, he, did. he definitely saw what he needed to do in those games. Yeah. And just being able to get a good chunk of damage down into the Maridon made it much, much easier to deal with. So, after that game number two, it's going to be tied up one apiece. Wow, you got to keep your head in the game, especially when you have to deal with crits. But I think Dorian played that flawlessly, did a very good job of making sure that he was able to actually get that damage down with the Lunala, and all the other pieces fell into place perfectly it really did and again the the adjustments that we saw from both these trainers i think really were interesting in that game number two we saw dorian bring that incineroar to the matchup this time around we saw that rillaboom really just pivoting again very aggressively to match the aggressive pivoting that the Maridon was doing on the opposing side of the field that plus an early ko on the iron crown really again gave dorian this opportunity to go on the offense and even seeing the lunala take the tachyon cutter from basically full health was so important, I think, for Dorian for information as we get ready for game three. 
Yeah, I mean, the Iron Crown still did like uh, like a bunch of damage, right? And, and had it not been for the leftovers, had it not been for some of that grassy terrain healing, then maybe this Lunala is in a little bit of a better place to just get cleaned up. I also think that Riley at the very end there also had to make a difficult decision. You yes. have the choice specs. What do you actually lock into? Because it doesn't really feel great to have an Electro type attack into two grass type attackers on the other side. And you also have to figure out how you're going to deal with this Terra Fairy from this Lunala. So a lot to consider heading into this game number three. A lot to consider indeed for both these trainers, but I do think that Dorian has to stick with that Terra Fairy terrestrialization on his Lunala if he wants to give himself these opportunities. I think if he's able to just force Riley to keep switching around and then force him again to make that tough decision of, well, what attack do I lock into? As long as you lock in the Terra Fairy on your Lunala pretty early on in the game, I think you can sort of keep that out for yourself and keep those grass Pokemon around and just otherwise keep that board open. I love the Ogre Pond play as well, and maybe we'll be seeing this from these players as we get game number three up and ready to go. Game number three, and it is just the same old, same old from both of them. They have figured out the leads that they want to bring for these matchups. Once again, it's going to be the Lunala and the Maridon hitting the field to start the game. So last time around, we did see a early Flare Blitz connect with the Rillaboom, and I don't think that's a risk that Dorian can afford to take here for a second time in this game number three. I did like, though, how he went on the offense with that Lunala pretty aggressively in game number two, that first turn, and I would love to see him try and go for that opportunity again here. Riley, on the other hand, though, you have to assume that one of these Pokemon is going to switch out, if not both. I don't know about that. I, I think that you're kind of okay to try to to, to just stay in and, and see kind of what's going on here. I think if you do allow Dorian to start to set up and stack these calm mines, though, it could become problematic, especially when that is going to be increasing not only your special attack, but also that special defense stat might not have worked out in that game number one, but didn't even need him for that game number two, so we'll see how it goes. Terra Fairy, at the very least, to kick things off, that's going to help with this defensive typing to make sure you're not taking a Dragon Pulse or a super effective knockoff. But it's going to be the fake out into the Maridon. Don't get a chance to see what it does for this turn, but at the very least, you do have the Calm Mind to get those boosts stacked. And at plus one special attack and special defense, this Lunala is ready to go. Knockoff. We'll get rid of the leftovers, but I think grassy terrain will be enough this turn to bring Lunala back up to full time. Oh, just missing just it by barely. one HP. Yeah, I mean, I think you're you're still not really threatened though, right? Yes, the Shadow Shield would be nice to be able to make sure that you can actually uh, hang on to an attack. So you're stalled a little bit. You could go for Protect if you really wanted to, but you're also not threatened by any type of super effective damage or even Hadron Engine at the moment to have to worry about. Incineroar, going to manually switch off the field here. You do have the... Uh, oh, the Iron Crown is going to be coming back into its place, but you saw that crit. I think we all saw that crit, yep. and that was through. The special defense boost that this Lunala is going to have, the Volt Switch, once again, uh, wreaking havoc onto this Lunala, this poor thing. I feel like the Calm Line boost almost work against it sometimes. Yeah, it's, you take a turn in order to give yourself that special attack and special defense boost, but it is unfortunate when things just do not come through. Moon Guy's Beam from this Lunala will target down the Incineroar after it's swapped places on the field, not to do a lot of damage, but Dorian will at least give himself the opportunity to switch his own Rillaboom out and threaten that terrain switch once again. Still pretty healthy, though. I think the Lunala yeah. is, is not necessarily in the worst spot. Yes, you do have to worry about something like the fake out, but if you have the Ochre Pond instead, then you know that you could also strike back. This is the perfect target that this Ochre Pond would like to see with the Incineroar on the other side. And the Iron Crown is also not too worse for wear as well when it's not going to be on that electric terrain. Exactly. And you also still have the opportunity here to protect on that Lunala as there is no Whimsicott Encore threatening to punish that play. So if Dorian wanted to here, he could just protect in Spiky Shield, just see what Riley is thinking about, and then go ahead and respond to that in the next coming turn. Well, it's not going to be the spiky shield, but we are going to see the protect from the Lunala. Definitely one way that you can just kind of start to play it safe, but you have to figure out maybe this Ogre Pond is not actually going to be able to see the light of day. You want to keep that sturdy intact as well. That is something yeah. you have to think about. And if we do see a fake out from this Incineroar, that is one way that you immediately lose that. So Ogre Pond's just going to manually switch out here. Uh, the Incineroar now going to be the fourth and final reveal for Dorian in this game number three. 
and so we're nicely able to kind of keep its opposition in check. Yeah, this is the exact position that this Incineroar was looking for. Uh, of course, there will be more revolving Pokemon around the field right now as Maridon will come back out onto the field. Uh, but still, being able to continue that fake out pressure on Dorian's side of the field for yet another turn is really important for his strategy right now. Quartz Drive activating again this Iron Crown, getting that special attack boost. But with this Protect, you would have liked to be able to see an exposed Lunala for something like this Tachyon Cutter, but the Protect is going to keep it healthy and safe for just this upcoming turn. And with this Incineroar on the field, you are a, you are kind of threatening on, on the opposition. You have to worry about the Maridon. You gotta have to shut off this Electric Terrain. It's nice that you're able to do that twice for the Quark Drive and the Maridon, but this poor Lunala, you gotta preserve it for later. You do. I, I wonder, though, if we'll see Riley actually go for a terrestrialization on the Iron Crown this turn. Go for Terra Ground, go for Terra Blast into the Incineroar. You do still have to worry a bit about the potential of Rillaboom coming back out onto the field, but it does seem like Iron Crown would be a very tempting target for terrestrialization. It does appear that way, uh, but it is going to be the Rillaboom that comes back out, so... I think it's a tough call. Like, if you want to actually invest the terrestrialization right now, it does mean that you don't actually have it for later. Uh, but here's the Rillaboom at the very least to shut off this terrain. There is no terrestrialization. It's just going to be the Electro Drift into that slot. Rillaboom has an Assault Vest to keep it nice and safe, as the Tachyon Cutter is going to be the follow-up, too. So Rillaboom actually does take about half damage from both of those attacks doubled up into it, but leaves this Incineroar to just go for the parting shot. It is uh, by far the biggest threat right now that Iron Crown, knowing that it's got that expert belt tachyon cutter for that Terra Fairy Lunala. It is the biggest threat right now, and I think that the parting shot as well covers if there was a switch in that spot or otherwise if the Iron Crown um, decided to go on the offense against the Incineroar in particular. So a very safe play from Dorian there. And again, we're going to keep seeing this revolving door of Pokemon play out in game number three as both these trainers are vying for the terrain advantage. Unfortunately for this Lunala, it really still needs the support of its partner Pokemon to try and find an opening here as the Iron Crown can very easily target it down. But it isn't just about the terrain control at this point. It's also about making sure that you can actually start to get damage. Again, Maridon, one of the things that it wants to do best is just try to keep getting consistent amounts of damage down. And we're kind of seeing that. HP differential is starting to rack up a little bit in Riley's favor. And so even if it isn't about just getting control of the terrain, you need to also be doing a little bit extra on top of that. Rillaboom, though, knows it is one of the slower things in regards to this Iron Crown as well as Maridon. So it is not safe to just sit around and find out with something like the U-turn. It's just going to have to get out of there with the Incineroar now going to come back in a little bit healthier. But this Electro Drift, I mean, yeah. It's too, uh, that's even without electric terrain at this point. That's just electro drift and how uh, powerful of a base power it has. Yeah, Dorian put on the back foot there, and I think what we'll see, most likely that was a double target into that Lunala to just try and ensure it was removed from the field, regardless of if there was a switch or uh, like we saw the Electro Drift just connecting outright. And I think Riley has done a really good job of keeping these two special attackers around to really root the core of his strategy around the damage and the potential that they have on the field. I really love how he's just been unafraid to leave the Maridon on the field, like you were just saying, to be dealing that consistent amount of damage and not fight for the terrain as much, using the knowledge he's gained over the past two games to realize, yes, this is great, but at the same time, I don't necessarily need this, especially if I'm able to guarantee a KO on the opposing restricted this turn or the next. I mean, it's still a Maridon. It's still like, a Maridon, like, yes, exactly. it's so fun to focus on all of the different attack modifiers it can have with this choice specs, with its ability, with just the same type of attack bonus that it's getting from a lot of these attacks. But yeah, at the end of the day, it is still a Maridon. It is still naturally it's a very high special attack stat. Now heading into this next turn, though, Dorian's trying to figure out how do I get around this Iron Crown or this Maridon at the moment? There's no call into this Protect. It's just Electro Drift after Electro Drift. Even the Incineroar is going to take a humongous amount of damage from that. With the uh, Tachyon Cutter going into the Ogre Pond instead, it does give a little bit of breathing room here for Dorian to try to get something done with this Incineroar. Parting Shot to continue to lower the special attack of this Iron Crown. At least get this Incineroar out of here, but... 
uh, the damage has kind of been done. At this point, Riley can just can sit there with one of the fastest Pokemon on the field with this Maridon and keep just hammering away with these Electro Drifts. Yeah, well, when we were talking about uh, game number two earlier, the Maridon really forced itself to lock into the Dragon Breath or Dragon Pulse just because it didn't want to be dealing resisted damage against these grass type Pokemon. But now we're in that same exact board state and we've seen just how little that ended up mattering overall. And that you're almost better going for the Electro Drift knowing just how many boosts that the Maridon has on its side so that the damage still will equal out. But calling back to that game number two, we're in a pretty different situation now where Riley actually does have more Pokemon in the back. That too. So while we do end up seeing Dorian try to hover over this similar place, Play, Maridon is not going to be the target of it this time around because it has an opportunity to switch. So Whimsicott is going to have to be on the receiving end of that. But with this fake out, you may break this focus sash, but you still have to deal with this Ivy cudgel and Whimsicott is not going to be able to deal with that. But at this point too, I think like it doesn't have a whole lot more to do in this match. You still are trying to figure out how do I actually get so that the Maridon is now in and without the threat of something like a fake out. I think the Whimsicott's main goal, honestly, throughout this entire matchup was to be on the field in front of Lunala and was to scare it away from going for those protects, to scare it away from going for those calm mines. And now that the Lunala isn't a threat anymore, I think Riley made a very good call there, switching it in, realizing that it was more valuable to get Maridon off the field and back on the field with the electric terrain, still at full health, mind you, uh, than it would have been to have those tools for Whimsicott. Just correctly recognizing, I have the Pokemon advantage, I have the ability to make the switch. While having Encore is great, that's not the tool I need right now to win. Dorian is on the back foot right now, though, has to make a pivot here, the Incineroar. Coming back in at such low HP, it is going to tank an attack and sort of sacrifice itself in front of both of these special attackers. Ogre Punk going for the spiky shield too. You just want to see if you can get any more damage, eke it out here with this Ogre Punk, but the Tachyon Cutter heading into this Incineroar, it's gonna fall it. Now with this Maridon, okay, you had the opportunity to switch in something else after this, but this is what you wanted if you're Riley. Rillaboom is stuck on the field now. That is really, really big. Yep. Now you have an opportunity to actually get this Maridon off, maybe sacrifice your own Incineroar, and what better way to get this Incineroar in here than from front of two physical attackers? Yeah, honestly, even if you do just switch in the Incineroar in this position, you could also use the Incineroar as part of your game-winning play to pick up that KO on the Rillaboom. We saw how much Flare Blitz did to it already. That is more than enough to pick up the KO unintimidated onto that Pokemon. So again, Riley just making sure that he has the tools that he needs to continue to play through his win conditions. Here's the switch though, right? Incineroar still in the back means that it can help out its pal Maridon by taking its place to tank these two attacks coming back in. Another Intimidate drop as well onto both their Rillaboom and the Ogre Pond is gonna make this Maridon stay around the field even longer as the Ivy Cudgel down into this Incineroar isn't actually even enough to get the knockout now because of all of those Intimidate drops stacking up. So while the Incineroar gets to stick around on the field too, this Iron Crown gets a chance to finally finish the job. The Ogre Pond is all knocked out and Rillaboom by itself here. Dorian has put up a great fight, but with just the Rillaboom left, this is a lot of health to have to get through. Riley Factura showing us that Iron Crown wasn't necessarily destined for the psychic terrain domination and that it works perfectly fine in other terrains. Will not be the Pokemon to deal the final bit of damage to that Rillaboom as the Maridon will take to the field once again, bringing back that electric terrain, ensuring that Rillaboom can't do any grassy glide shenanigans for the remainder of this match. But overall, what an incredibly well-played set from Riley. Got a little bit of luck there with some of those crits and everything, but overall just maintaining a fantastic board position all the way up until this end game. Yeah, I mean, even just still having the Iron Crown left, it's gonna end up getting the receiving end of this grass type attack, but that's even if this Rillaboom actually gets a chance to move, because it's the Dragon Pulse that it's locked into for its final move of choice. Wily with that knockout is going to move on from this set, continued undefeated 5-0 after that 2-1 victory. You know, Riley is playing so cool right now.